arrogance and cynicism built into the American doctrine of their foreign policy. Today, it would be nice to remember something else. How many Soviet missiles did the United States have enough to arrange a global psychosis during the Cuban Missile Crisis? This is on the one hand. And on the other hand, how many weapons were brought to our borders in a short time, to those territories, that are controlled by NATO today? The question is, who then is really bringing the world closer to the apocalypse? Today we are conducting a special military operation for the sake of protecting our sovereignty and for the sake of territorial integrity, for the safety of millions of citizens. It is obvious that a full-scale hybrid war has been unleashed against our country. Our enemies are heavily drugged by their American and European patrons with lethal weapons of all kinds. They encourage terror in the border regions of Russia. They commit sabotage and political assassinations. In fact, they are leading the matter to a third world war, to a global catastrophe, in which, as you know, there can be no winners by definition. Cicero once said that the law is not my judge, but the judge is the speaking law. Modern man often perceives law through the prism of justice. However, Western countries are striving to turn international justice into a controlled instrument of reprisals against objectionable states and people. This is despite the fact that they themselves are not subject to jurisdiction. It would be nice to remember how the structures of international justice reacted to each of the aggressions of the United States of America in different parts of the world over the past 70 years. These examples are almost non-existent, but how do some international judicial and quasi-judicial bodies behave now, when in any, even in the most obvious case, they stubbornly take anti-Russian positions, even if this is contrary to law, the circumstances of the case, and elementary logic, they reshape the plot of court cases in favor of primitive propaganda. They justify or turn a blind eye to the most heinous crimes committed by the Kiev regime against their own country. If we take the very little intelligible International Criminal Court, which we and the Americans do not consider to be in any way legitimate for our countries and citizens, this is a useless and powerless structure, which, as you know, was created on the basis of the Rome Statute, in which the largest countries do not participate. If these countries did not recognize it, then this means that this body initially turned into a marginal one, that is, obviously useless for them, this is a sort of bunch of legal impotence. The International Criminal Court was able to bring to justice only a couple of minor political figures from small countries, and they naturally stayed at home. Finally, it signed its own verdict. Ignoring the U.S. crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq, but the finest hour struck at this specific court today. At the insistence of the United States, they are trying to persecute Russia and its top officials. Of course, there is nothing to be surprised here, since the one who pays, as you know, calls the music. But what kind of justice can we talk about if the United States, which is not a party to the Rome Statute, nevertheless, in fact, openly pumps the International Criminal Court with finances, hardware and software resources, and they do not even hide that they are doing this for the sake of considering specific anti-Russian cases that are beneficial to them. Let me remind you that this year the total budget of this special court has increased by 24 million euros. Of course, you can look at it in any way you like, but, in fact, it looks like a bribe from the American authorities.